In the last video, I showed you a presentation on how a neural network works and what's going on underneath the hood. So to kind of help illustrate it in a different way, we're going to do a real life training scenario here and we're going to actually do a ton of console logging and output uh, to actually help you see what it's doing to the real data that we're training. So I've gone ahead and hacked brain.js and added tons of console logging uh, that should really help us understand what it's doing to our training data. And then if you've been following the examples we've done in the past videos, all of which will be in the description, uh, then you'll really understand this. This is very simple what we're doing. We're creating a neural network and we're training it with one piece of data and we're only doing one training iteration, which of course is silly in real life because normally we'd have tons of training data and 20,000 or so iterations. But we don't wanna do that because that'd be just log bonanza. So we're gonna go ahead and train this one piece of data one time and let's show you what happens. So there we go, I've gone ahead and run it and let me scroll back through my logs. Yes, this is all a mess. Um, and before I start going through this, I'm gonna take the final log output and put it in a gist and add it to the description here. Uh, because if you step through this, it actually is really, really helpful. This is, doing things like this actually helped me understand how neural networks work when I was learning them. Uh, so what we've done is we've, ta we've started training. It says, hey, here's our training data. We have basically one piece of data and it's got an input and an output. So let's go ahead and run input set zero, which is this whole thing right here. We only have one piece, one input set. And so then we're gonna look at our neural network. Hey, layer two, which is this layer right here, layer number two, it has three nodes. Layer three has two nodes. Uh, so layer two has three nodes. Let's start with node zero. So we're gonna calculate this node, then calculate this node, then calculate this node. And then we're gonna move on to these, calculate this, calculate this. So let's start with node zero. Hey, look, we've initialized it with a bias. There's our bias. And we've also initialized weights for each of our input values. So zero has been given a weight um, and dimension one has been given a weight. So dimension zero, which happens to be zero, uh, has been given this weight and that. So we're gonna calculate the node value, which is zero times this, one times this number. We're gonna add those two calculations together and then add our bias as well. And we end up with a value for that node. But we're not done yet. Then we're gonna run that through the sigmoid function because our neural network by default with brain will use the sigmoid function. And there we go, that is the value for our node. Node one is done, boom. Let's go start with node two, which I'm accidentally calling node one there. Uh, node zero, node one. And now node one, we're gonna do the exact same thing. Different biases, different weights, same values, same input values, um, zero and one. Now we're gonna go on to node two, same thing. New bias, new weights, same input values of zero, one. You can see we have all of our sigmoid output values Done. So now let's move on to layer three. Layer three has two nodes, two output layers for our neural network. So there we go, we have our biases and look, we have three inputs now because we have three of those middle hidden layers. Here's those outputs. You can see 0 0.45, 0 0.47 and 0.459. For example, node number three has 0.459. There's that number. So that's our input to the next layer. And we're gonna multiply those by the weights, we're gonna sigmoid them, and now our two output nodes have a final value. So there's our final value. Let's go ahead and calculate the error, the delta. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and back propagate, and we're gonna go make some adjustments to the weights. Here's our weight adjustment formula. It's our learning rate times the delta, times the value of the current weight, and we're also going to add the momentum plus the prior change that we made, which is gonna be zero right now because we didn't make a prior change in the last step. So this is basically just doing that for step number one. This is gonna to output to zero. So then we're going to go ahead and make an adjusted change, 0 0.00192. We've modified our weight for this layer. We've modified the weight and we've modified our bias as well down here, we've adjusted the bias by that much. So we adjusted our bias, we adjusted our weight. Let's go down to the next layer and let's go down to the next layer. We've adjusted all of our biases and our weights. We're ready for the next iteration. So let's go change this now. Let's run two iterations. And let's look at what happens on iteration number two. It's gonna look exactly the same except for the weights and the biases are all going to be different. The weights have changed, the biases have changed ever so slightly because our, lear our learning rate is 0.03. We don't wanna make these brash 
guesses and say, oh, you showed me one piece of data one time. Well, now I know exactly what the answer is. Um, if you'll notice now, um, our momentum times change has changed a little bit. Since we had a prior change value, we actually have a little bit of momentum right now. So last iteration's change value is going to slightly affect this iteration's change value. Basically, if this number was on its way down, we're going to make sure it keeps, it wants to go down at least a little bit. Um, and so that's basically how that works. That is two iterations on one piece of data. And if we were to then go ahead and change this, let's go ahead and give it two pieces of data. Let's say that equates to a one and a one. Well, now we're gonna do four complete loops. Let me scroll up here, pardon with me. We're gonna do four loops through our neural network. We're going to say, hey, we're training. We have two pieces of data here. And so we're doing two iterations. So it's going to take these two values put them in the inputs, run them through the neural network. Then it's going to take these two input values, input sets, run them through the neural network. That's training iteration one. And then it's going to take all of them and run it through training iteration two again. And we're gonna keep doing those iterations until we've either reached the desired error level or the desired count of iterations. When we're done here, I can console log. Once we have a trained network, I can console log, oh, let's stringify this because it's going to be JSON. We're going to JSON stringify net dot to JSON. So I'm going to output the JSON of what I have here and I'm going to stringify that so it's easy to see. So when our train network is done, this is actually what we've come up with. We have some sizes here. We can see our sizes are 232. Two. You can change this in the options, but that's what it shows. And then here's our layers. Our final train network has biases and weights for all of our different layers. Biases and weights, you can see that we used an, a sigmoid activation function, which is the default. And then these were our training options and our default error threshold. There we go. We've trained a neural network and this right here, this JSON object is our trained neural network. We can now take two pieces of input without knowing the output, run it through this network, and the output should work. I say should because clearly this is just made up data and we only did two iterations. So that's how a neural network works. Hopefully you're comfortable now looking at a diagram like this and understanding what's actually going on, how it's calculating really complex outcomes from, from data that would be hard to predict otherwise. Neural networks are awesome. They're tons of fun. Uh, get into them. The documentation for BrainJS is great. It's really easy to pick different activation functions, uh, to change the amount of hidden layers in your network. Uh, play around with it. Have fun with some data sets that are available online. And uh, have a great day.